So with that 10-year yield rallying 12% basically since that last Fed cut, where are we going to go from here? And does this 10-year yield rally stop? And we brought in an expert. Uh, please welcome to the show, uh, Mr. David Nelson. David, thanks for being on. Um, what are your thoughts here? I mean, I have mine, um, but it's been a, that's a pretty sizable move with, uh, after a rate cut. Yeah, I, I think on the heels of that number that we saw on Friday, that was 254,000, uh, obviously, you know, a lot more than expected. Look, I'm the stock guy, and the first place I went to that day was bonds. And yields were up across the in, the entire curve. And that was not in the playbook they handed out at the last Fed meeting. And so you saw a lot of scrambling in the last several days as market participants uh, try to reposition here. Because like you said, I think I think they were up about 33 basis points. Uh, we're above 4 percent, I guess, since the first time since uh, late July. So a lot of scrambling going on here. Okay, and, and another, to add fuel to that fire, I think on Friday, we also saw mortgage rates rise by uh, 25 basis points, which in one day was a record a record move in one day, too. So that kind of gives me the, you know, maybe people were leaning the wrong way. I, I'm, I'm not so sure it lasts, though. What do you think? Uh, I think it has legs uh, for the following reason. I, I think, you know, the playbook is that the Fed is going to cut rates, and they will cut rates because real rates are still pretty restrictive even now. Uh, but there's another there's another issue going on, and the explanation for the ten year a little bit more nuanced. Sure, the economy is doing better than thought, then then Treasury should sell off. But dollars to donuts, that job number likely gets revised down. Uh, and second, and maybe this is the most important, big buyers of U.S. debt, a lot of them are foreign players, uh, and there's a tremendous force around the world to de-dollarize. You know, uh, BRICS, which used to just be Brazil, Russia, India, China, and then South Africa. Today, you can add Iran, Egypt, even Saudi Arabia is kind of a quasi member. We don't have a lot of friends on that list. And if there is this effort to de-dollarize and get off the dollar as the world's reserve currency, there's going to be less need for debt. And then and then investors in 10-year yields are going to want more food on their plate. They're going to want higher yields. I, I absolutely, I call that one the debt bomb. I think that's absolutely uh, one of those things that absolutely could happen. But in the short term, well, here's where I'm thinking. In the short term, um, we had somebody on that gave a pretty compelling argument about um, right now, the negative sentiment in treasuries is probably the highest it's been in a long time, almost record high. So there is some forces selling bonds lower right now. And at the same time, You've got a lot of folks that are um, really, really the, the positive sentiment in the stock market is also very high uh, across maybe the retail sector or so. But those two things cor could correct at the same time. Yeah, reversion to the mean is probably one of the more powerful forces on Wall Street. So when everybody is leaning in a certain direction, the market has a habit of, of, of taking taking that taking some of that back. I think a lot's going to depend on the economy. Uh, we get a, a different inflation number. We got some inflation numbers this week. You just mentioned it. Uh, that's going to change the dynamic probably in a heartbeat. And technicals, uh, we had another folk, another guy on about technicals. I mean, if we get through that 407 and that 10-year yield to the upside, he's calling for 427. I mean, that's where I think things could peter out a little bit. I'm not saying we can't go a little bit higher from here. But I, I don't know about you, but I don't think, you know, 254 that we got on Friday, uh, the, the question I posed to each one of the guests, we had three on the Friday's Cow Guy Close, is that indicative of the economy that you live and work in every day? And all of them said, no, no. it's not. Um, <laughs> and so what say you about that? I'm going to ask you that question. Is that number indicative of the world that you live in? I, I think it's going to be revised down. So we've seen that, you know, so often. And look, we're, we're coming up on an election and these things happen and uh, we got a pretty powerful number here. Uh, but I think it will be revised down. And I think the Fed is going to do their thing. They're going to continue to cut rates. It just may not be at the pace that we were expecting. And so to, the, to your point, too, I, I agree with you. I think um, they, they might bleed in some quarter points here and there. But, you know, even if you look at that Fed watch tool, that's moved. Um, they, take, uh, they took a half percent cut out of it. Now it's only uh, a 12 percent chance of no move and an, 80, yeah. what, an 88 percent chance of a, a quarter percent move. Um, but I'm just so not sure that this market uh, could handle um, a, a much higher 10-year yield. I mean, it's, a lot of things are priced to that. So that's why I think it's not going to be that long in the leg. I mean, we, might, we could see it to 427, like the technical guys say, but uh, I, I can't see it going much higher than four and a quarter. 
Okay, so let's let's say that's true. I, I I agree with you. If if it did push higher than that, it would be rough for the markets because the first input of any model of valuation in the stock market is the risk free right, rate. Right. If the risk free rate is rising, then the multiples have to come come down somewhat. So maybe there'll be some pressure to to undo that. I guess some of the things I've been talking about are longer term in nature and technicals for me. Those are the things that work right up until the time that I use it. So I'll, I'll stick with my <laughs> right. Well, as my father my old would say, way. my father would say, you know, every ship at the bottom of the ocean had a chart room, right? So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you coming on, David. That's awesome. Thank you for being on the show, Take care. David Nelson, coming to us from Greenwich, Connecticut. Okay.